What's up, everybody? I hope you're having a great day. I know I am. It's my day off, so I am loving life at the moment. That being said, let's just jump into our video real quick. This is going to be a fast one because I want to start another, I guess, quote unquote, series, kind of like my Vim tips of the day. But this is just going to be like bash quick tips or bash, you know, quick info on bash. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump into it, shall we? We're going to go ahead and open a terminal and we're going to clear the screen and let's zoom in. Now I'm going to cd into dot local and I have a test directory. So we're going to do, go in there, do an ls, we'll do an la just so you can see that there's nothing in there. Um, and we're going to start messing around with making and uh, deleting files. So you know about the touch command to create a file. You just do touch and do file and then whatever. You can do file one to do a single file or you can use curly braces and do one dot dot two. And so then if we do an ls you can see we've got file one and file two created. Now let's go ahead and remove those. So if we do an rm and we do file and we use the curly braces and do one dot dot two and use create the braces again and then we hit enter and ls we see we have deleted both files. Now this is all basic stuff. I know you're probably thinking why am I even watching this video? I already know this. And that might be the whole case for this entire video. I don't know. Um, but I just thought this is kind of interesting. So we're going to go with it. So let's go ahead and create those files again. So we'll do touch and we'll do file one dot dot two and that's going to give us both those files again so if we do an ls and now let's create two more so we are going to touch file and go to dot dot oops one two we're going to do three and four and hit enter so now if we do an ls we got four files created right okay so we got four files created. How do we remove those files? Well, if you want to do multiple at a time, you just, you know, obviously use the rm command, but you can do rm, and let's say we want to remove file um, uh, three and four. So let's do file, and then we'll do clear the braces, and we'll do three dot dot four. And that's going to remove files three and four. So if we do an ls, you can see only one and two are left, correct? Again, still very basic. I know, I'm sorry if you're bored, um, but this is just kind of intro stuff so what if we do this and we do rm and we use a square bracket so let's do file and we use a square bracket and we do one dot dot two and close with a square bracket let's go ahead and hit enter and we'll do an ls same thing so the square bracket and the curly bracket both erased the files correct well let's touch and we'll do file and then we'll do one dot dot four and we'll create all four of those files again so now we have the four files again <coughs> excuse me now let's go ahead and do touch and we'll do file and we'll use the curly braces and we'll do one dot dot two and we'll hit enter now if we do an ll you can see that file one and file two now have a different timestamp by about 15 seconds so this is 1436.50 1436.50 and then the other two are 1436.35 so about a 15 second difference so touch file and then curly braces one dot dot two just updated the timestamp for those two files. Well, what happens if we do touch and we do file and we use the square brackets? So let's do three dot dot four, and then we hit enter and we do an ll. Now we can see that three and four, the timestamp on those has been updated. So it's fourteen thirty seven and nineteen seconds. So again, it basically did the same thing as using the curly braces. Where am I going with this? You might ask. Well, here's where we get a little different. So let's remove a couple files. Let's do rm and we'll do file and we'll do curly braces and we'll do three dot dot four with the curly braces. And we'll hit enter and now let's do an ls and okay that removed files three and four just like we expected it to do and let's do file or um rm file and use the square bracket and do one dot dot two and square bracket again and now we hit ls and they're gone so all the files are gone so now let's do um touch file and then we'll use the curly braces again one dot dot two and we'll hit enter and i know this is very repetitive but just bear with me. And so now if we do an ls, you can see we've got one and two created again. And now let's do touch file and use the square brackets, three dot dot four and use the closing square bracket. Now let's do an ls and hit it. Huh. Well, what happened there? All along, the square brackets have been working just the same as the curly braces. So every time we updated the timestamp, every time we removed, it did the same thing no matter whether we use the square brackets or the curly braces. Why now, when we create a file using the curly braces, it creates the two files that we want, but when we create a file and use the square brackets, 
it gives us this and not the two separate files. Well, basically in layman's terms, I'm just going to try and explain this as easily as possible. Um, basically what's going on is when you use the square brackets, it looks to see if those files are actually already in existence. If they are in existence, it acts on them. So when file 3 and file 4 existed and we ran the touch command on it with the square brackets, it updated the timestamp just like it should because it looked and saw they existed. Just the same as with the curly braces. The curly braces looked for file 1 and 2 to exist and they did so they updated the timestamp. When we removed them, it, the curly braces looked for file 1 and file 2 or file 3 and file 4. It saw them so it erased them. Same with the square braces. It looked for file 1 and 2 or file 3 and 4. It saw they existed so it erased them. Why then does it not create them? What's going on is when the square braces are used, and I, I encourage you to look up globbing um, if, uh, if you want a further detail into this, but if you look up globbing you can kind of get a better idea what's going on, but really what's going on is when you use the square brackets it is looking for those files to exist. If those files do not exist it will not act on them and it will just create this file right here. So as we see right here the file three or the file square brackets three dot dot four it created that file because it didn't see file three and file four already in existence since it didn't see those files in existence it created a singular file named this because it just reverts to just the, sing the singular touch command so again I encourage you to look up globbing that will um, kind of explain things a little better but I just kind of wanted to get out there and get this kind of quick idea to people on kind of how bash works a little bit and the differences between the brackets and how they function Now that's not all that's not in depth that's not you know the be all end all of these brackets which is again why I seriously encourage you read the bash man page look up file globbing whatever but I just thought this was really interesting I, I came across this um, on one of the forums I was reading and it was a good point I saw somebody asking this and then I happened to see it in several other places too so if you had questions about that or ever wondered about that that's why but again I encourage you to look up look up glob when it comes to bash and the command line and it will explain things so much better than I could but this was just kind of a visual example of what's going on and what happens when you do that so that being said I hope you have a great rest of your weekend and I hope you enjoy the rest of your time off if you got it um, if you don't and you got to work man don't work too hard and I hope you guys have a great great day God bless